Hey everybody, it's Kate. Thanks for joining me today. I am reacting to an article that I just read called The 41 Best Money Tips from Highly Successful People. Many of us are in the middle of a savings challenge right now. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll leave the video at the very end of this so you can check that out next. But basically, any time that you're watching this, you don't have to be in the middle of a money saving challenge to want to have good money saving tips. So, kind of like Dave Ramsey says, if you want to get good money advice, don't ask your broke uncle. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Some of these people you might have heard of, some people you haven't, some people you might like, some people you don't. But let's just see what we can derive as far as what their tips are and see if they can be useful to us. Number one, Laura Oldaney, founder of Rich and Resilient Living, told Good Housekeeping that one of the best money tips is to first look at how you can creatively use what you have right there in your own home. Take stock of what you currently have. You guys, we talk about this all the time on the channel, utilizing what you already have, always be taking stock, be taking inventory using up what you already have because sometimes we buy things that we really don't need and we have literally the exact same thing at home or something similar that we can use so use up what you've got first number two is set your goals early when it comes to budgeting the same person recommends looking at the life you want and building your budget in pursuit of that life yeah she advises people to figure out what they would like their life to look like. Think about it. What a wealthy and happy life looks like to them. Then track your spending for several months and see how your spending matches that vision. That is awesome advice in my own opinion. Number three, start investing gradually at first. Hello, you guys know that this is one of my biggest regrets in my entire life that I didn't start investing earlier. And you don't have to invest everything right away, but if you can even start just a little bit, as I would say, start with your 401k by your employer and do up to the match, just start with that. Or open your Roth IRA. No better time than today. Number four is don't equate happiness and wealth. Knowing that we can live very rich lives without needing to spend lots of money to do it. Something to keep in mind next time you're really eyeing that thing at the store that you really don't need. Don't equate happiness and wealth. You can be happy and live rich, but not necessarily have a ton of wealth. Number five is cut back on recurring expenses as much as possible. We talk about this all the time on the channel. Christine B's founder at Untangle Money explains, one of the biggest tips is to try and reduce your fixed costs. The less money you spend on all the stuff that keeps you going, the more money you have to spend on things that you want to spend your money on. So if your fixed expenses can get lower, your mortgage, your rent, all your utilities, if you're still doing cable or streaming services, any of those, try to get everything at the lowest, your cell phone, everything that you have to pay every single month, try to get it as low as you can so that you have money for other stuff or savings. Number six, focus on the present and future when investing. They say first know where you are and know where you're going, a budget, tells you where you are now and a financial plan or retirement plan tells you where you're going. Oh yeah. Number seven, start investing right now. <laughs> They're really harping on this and I can't say it again. Start now. That same person B says, start today. The first thing you should do is check if you have an employee retirement match and see if your company matches what you invest through your retirement plan. Okay, so we already said this one, but we really can't repeat it enough. If you're hearing this right now and you don't even know if your company offers a retirement plan, ask them about it today, not even tomorrow, like today. Just call them and say, hey, do you offer any retirement plans? Because some of us don't think about it. I did not think about it. In my 20s, what was I worrying about retirement for? 
but that was wrong. That was wrong of me. I didn't know. You don't know until you know. And if you don't know right now, I'm telling you, now you know. Start now. The compound interest. And even if you don't know what compound interest is right now, the first time you're hearing this, just listen to my words and get started. Invest today. Number eight is automated management services can be a big help. Some of us love to have everything automated, auto pay for bills. And if you are uncomfortable with that, you don't have to do it. But most of my stuff, most of my recurring bills are on auto pay, but you also know that I check my checking every single weekday to make sure that nothing wonky came out of there. So if you're kind of on it, um, then you won't miss payments. And I think that is a very, very useful tool. Just automate it. And automating your savings to do it every single time is a really great habit to get into. Number nine is consider a financial advisor. I've never done this. I honestly don't plan to do this unless maybe one day down the road, I'm making so much money, I don't even know what to do with it. But until then, I'm not personally gonna take this tip, but if you really need some help and you have watched YouTube videos and you have researched things, by the way, I hate people and like, did you research it? Because a lot of people are researching convenient theories for myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you really wanna get educated, you've gotta look around, you've gotta find people you trust to give you good money advice. So if you do really need some help, considering a financial advisor is not a bad idea. Number 10, I love this one. Focus on the things that spark joy. On this channel, we talk about frugal living and minimalism quite often, frugal living all the time, minimalism. Sometimes it's incorporated into this channel because when you are choosing things that spark joy in your life, you're eliminating the stuff that doesn't. And why do you want that stuff in your life anyway? So choose the things that spark joy. If your home is only filled with things that spark joy and are truly useful, then you're filled with the things you love and the things that you actually need. And you can eliminate the stuff that you don't. Marie Kondo's KonMari method is very popular. If you don't know about Marie Kondo yet, read her book, The Magic of Tidying. It's fantastic. She really focuses on keeping the things that spark joy. Number 11 is don't be afraid to go for it. Can you put a little bit more of your money into investments? If we put more of that money to work for us, we'll be able to generate more wealth. Number 12, be like Queen Latifah's mother. Well, let me read how to do this. Queen Latifah says, my mom has always been my champion. She was very smart and grounded. She said, save your money, pay your taxes, don't put everything in one basket. Queen Latifah's mom's got some good advice. Number 13 is invest in what makes you, you. Ah, uh, quote from one of my favorite people, Oprah Winfrey. In her book, What I Know For Sure, she suggests that you should spend your money on the things that really matter to you. She said, I hope the way you spend your money is in line with the truth of who you are and what you care about. Perfect. Number 14 is take a pause before ordering. Oprah, again, wrote, I still think twice before I buy anything, even Oprah. Mm. How will this fit into what I already have? Am I just caught up in the moment? Can it be of real use to me or is it just something beautiful to have? These are great questions to ask yourself it's always a great idea to pause before you actually order because sometimes you get really excited and you're like, put it in the cart, put it in the cart, put it in the cart. And then you hit purchase and then you're like, oh man. And then you suffer from buyer's remorse. But if you pause, some people do a week wait before they buy anything. Some people do 30 days, whatever works for you, but pause, give it a minute. Number 15 comes from Carrie Underwood. Coupons can really help. Carrie Underwood may be super successful, but that doesn't mean she doesn't look for ways to save. She explains like what was on her list and that uh, she had headed to the store and she forgot her favorite coupons and so she had to go back. Uh, she said, yes, she does clip them. And that came out in the Rachel Ray magazine. For me, I use digital coupons these days. There was a time a long time ago 
that I was clipping the physical ones. But now the grocery store that I go to most frequently has an app and you can clip them digitally and then you put your phone number in when you check out and it takes that off. And I love that. Oh, if you don't use Honey yet, please use my code down below. I'll leave my link. If you have Honey installed, it's free. It's totally free. It just takes a couple seconds and then it will always make sure it tells you the best coupon codes available for whatever website you're using. I love that. So um, I use Honey, I use Rakuten, and I use Fetch. I will leave my codes all down in the description for you to check those out if you're interested. Number 16 comes from Nicki Minaj. Do you guys know I love hip hop music? Love, love rap, love hip hop, amongst many other types of music, but you guys know I'm a choreographer, so I'll use some of her music for, for dance. The clean version, of course. She says, people, especially women, need to ask for what they deserve when it comes to compensation. One thing I learned along the way in business is the necessity for you to be unapologetic about asking for how much money you deserve, she told Time. Ask for what you deserve. Don't be afraid to ask for it. The worst they can say is no. Go for it. Go for it. Number 17 is help out your community. This comes from Ashton Kutcher. If you're lucky enough to be doing well, it's incumbent upon you to help folks who are struggling to grab that first rung on the ladder to start their climb. Absolutely. The more you have, the more you can give. And I think that's like another one of the things that Dave Ramsey stresses to work so hard to get out of debt and live like no one else so you can eventually live like no one else is all about in the end being able to live and give like you've never before. And who doesn't want to do that? Number 18 is always speak up and inquire if you don't know. I think that is such a good point. A lot of people are intimidated by money things. And if you don't know and you can't find the answer, don't be afraid to ask. Especially me, guys. You guys ask me a bunch of questions. And if you're ever thinking like, oh, she's going to think this is such a stupid question. It's not. Go ahead and ask. If I can help, I'll give you the answer. Number 19 comes from Justin Timberlake. Value high quality goods. Justin Timberlake knows the power of investing in items. I will just say that I'm pretty frugal. Oh my gosh, he even used the word frugal. He's even cuter to me now. He told The Guardian, I'll probably shop for clothes for myself once a year and that will last me for the rest of the year. Justin? Justin, I love you. Justin is my best friend's absolute favorite celebrity on the planet like loves Justin Timberlake so much Allie in case you didn't know Justin's frugal just another reason to adore him more number 20 is keep your spending money separate says Jay Leno let's check this out when I was a kid I had two jobs I worked at a Ford dealership and a McDonald's I'd spend the money from one job and save the money from the other oh, I like that that's still the way I am now. I live on the money I make as a comedian and I put all the TV money in the bank. I've never spent a dime of TV money ever. He told Parade Magazine. That is flipping awesome, Jay Leno. Cheers, Jay Leno. Cause I'm assuming that's a lot of money in savings. Brilliant. Number 21, shop items on clearance. Even a big time actress like Sarah Michelle Gellar knows how to bargain hunt. I think it's funny that I'm getting all into the celebrity names. We don't know if any of this is true. It's an article, but it's fun. Let's just go with it. We shop at Whole Foods, but we ask which fish is on sale. <laughs> on sale doesn't mean it's bad. It's probably just means it's overcaught and I clip coupons all the time. <laughs> In the frugal community, often people call Whole Foods whole paycheck because it's that expensive. I don't shop at Whole Foods. Um, I'm not saying I would never shop at Whole Foods. It's just, it's not near where I am. But also I heard it's really expensive and not 
necessarily worth it, but some people think it's absolutely worth it. So I don't really have an opinion on Whole Foods because I don't go there enough to, to make a call on that. But I think in general, it's good if we can find clearance items that are still really good quality. That's kind of for everything. I love getting stuff on clearance. Number 22, understand how wealth affects your mindset. Simon Cowell says, money brings you security and choice. You can make decisions in a different way if you have a lot of money. But when you have nothing, you have a more fearless attitude because you have nothing to lose. On this channel, we often talk about mindset, money mindset, good healthy mindsets, and it's good to understand how one affects the other. Number 23 comes from Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. Oh, some of his movies, just so good. And then I also love the show Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. And the first episode ever with Jerry Seinfeld was with Jim and I was so excited. Jim Carrey has adopted a no guilt philosophy that some might find inspiring. He says, I feel guilty about too much in my life, but not about money. I went through periods when I had nothing. So somebody in the family has to get stinking wealthy. Hey, why not it be you? Why not it be you? Why not it be you being the one just getting stinking wealthy, just kicking butt and then being able to help out the family? Might as well be you, might as well, may as well be me. Number 24 comes from Jada Pinkett. Think hard about loaning money. We talked about this on the channel a long time ago. Somebody had, one of our K-Squad members had loaned somebody money and it turned out to be kind of a mess. And what she says is, I only give money that I'm willing to give like this is a gift. So she only gives if it's gonna be a gift. She's never expecting anything in return. She doesn't want that person to feel like they owe her. And I think that that's a, a pretty good general way to go. You gotta do what's right for you, but loaning money can get really dicey. But if you can gift money and you're okay with it, it's within your budget and you feel good about it and you're really helping somebody out, I would say try to give with the expectation of they owe you nothing in return. Do it out of kindness. Number 25 comes from Hoda. She says, seek employment that makes you smile. Uh, she says she never wanted to be happy every other Friday and on payday. I didn't want that to be the happy day. I wanted to feel good throughout. I gotta tell you, my new job that I have right now, and sometimes when people start new jobs, it's always like very exciting and new and fun. But right now my work environment is really good and I'm really hoping that continues because it's a real pleasure to be at work instead of like dreading work when you can actually find a place that you feel happy going to and supported and like, people are kind. It's just, it really makes a big difference in your life. If those 40 hours a week that you're going to spend at work are spent in a place that you like. Number 26 is don't be afraid to say goodbye. Halle Berry. When you know that the work you're providing is worth more than they're willing to pay you, then you'll ask for it. That's when you'll be willing to walk away from it if they say no, but you have to be willing to walk away. We have to own our worth and know our worth. I think that's very important. If you are not getting compensated for what you know you're worth, you've got to ask for what you're worth. And then if they're really not willing to compensate you appropriately and you find a place that will, don't be afraid to walk away. We all have families to support and financial goals and you want to be where you're valued and you wanna also be compensated for that value. Number 27 is always think long-term. This one's coming from Mark Wahlberg. Everybody is about what am I going to do today? But I think having a long-term plan and strategy is the most important thing you can do. I think that a lot of us that are on this channel think about a little bit more of the long-term because it's in the forefront of our minds. For people that don't think about money, budgeting, investing, any of that stuff ever, they might just be kind of like getting by day to day. But I think thinking out into the future is definitely a useful tool so that you can come up with a plan and reach some financial goals. 
Number 28 comes from one of my oddly favorite characters, Don Draper from Mad Men. It's really John Hamm. He says, money for me is a means to an end to pay your bills and eat. The tip is maintain a healthy outlook. It's definitely a good idea to have a balanced perspective on your finances. I agree. And you know, one of my subscribers just recently wrote me this pretty long comment and she was just like, I'm kind of disappointed. I think she's in her 70s and she was just saying, I'm, I'm disappointed that so much focus these days is on money and stuff. And we kind of got into a, a nice conversation about it because I know what she's talking about. Like, she's like, when when did it become just all about money and 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 stuff? Like, we're talking about minimalism and stuff. And she she wasn't criticizing the channel. She was just saying like, this is this is it now, you know. And uh, I'm obsessed with lip balm. Do you know this about me? So I agree that it is a good idea to maintain a healthy outlook on finances. Number twenty nine, one of my favorite ones. It's being frugal is important. Actress and rapper Aquafina may be bringing home some healthy paychecks after occurring in movies like Crazy Rich Asians and Ocean's 8, but she's still careful when it comes to money. She says, I would recommend that millennials be financially conservative. I don't know how to be any other way. I've paid off some of my student loans and I don't have a credit card. Way to go, girl. That's pretty great. You guys know I am not anti-credit card, but I do really appreciate her sense of responsibility of getting those student loans paid and not just blowing money on credit cards. That's awesome. She pointed out millennials because she is also a millennial, I believe. I love it when millennials are recommending to be financially on the conservative side and just like be smart about their money and be wise in making the decisions with their money at a young age because as you guys know if I could go back in time I would have rocked the fire movement. If you haven't looked up the fire movement and you are interested in retiring early just type in the search into google fire movement it's it's I think it's pretty awesome. I can still do fire but a lot of people that do fire, and again, age doesn't necessarily have to be like the thing, but they'll be like, I wanna be retired by 35 or I wanna be retired by 40. I'm already past both of those, but if I could go back in time and I knew about fire, oh, I'll be setting this thing on fire. Number 30, oh, of course I love this one. Always know your budget and stick to it. Cheers to that. Adam Rippon from the Olympics in 2018, he says, I'm pretty careful and always have myself on some sort of budget, even if it's not necessary. Boom, I love that. Cause some people think, oh, I don't need a budget cause X, Y, Z. He doesn't even need a budget, but he's still got one. Boom, 31, aim to be able to call your own shots. Roxane Gay, author of Bad Feminist and Hunger, shared her thoughts on a small but essential thing for women to consider. I think the most important thing a woman can ever do for herself is to have financial independence. <laughs> Even if you're saving $5 a paycheck, I totally understand the realities of the world, but save $5 a paycheck, it really, really helps. Saving money and becoming financially independent in whatever way you define that, really does feel amazing and it starts with just very small action that can really pile up. Some of you doing the savings challenge right now, maybe you've never attacked a savings challenge before and you're saving money and you're like, wow, I had no idea I can do this. Start small, you can. Number 32, keep track and watch your accounts carefully. Ooh, hello, Kate Method. What does the T stand for you guys? T stands for track exactly what they're saying. Kim Kardashian still keeps a close eye on her money. I'm really on top of my financial situation. I do everything, I see everything, write every check, and I'm on top of every last detail. We wanna be on top of our finances. That's why I use the every dollar tool. I literally know where every dollar is going every single month because I assign it a job. Every single month I assign my dollars a place to go work and they go and they get the job done. So there's not ever a time where I'm like, where did my money go? 
I know exactly where it went. I'm tracking it. Number 33 is remember time is money. Jonathan Van Ness explained that he struggled with whether to do his friend's hair for free. When I was younger, I felt weird charging people to do something I loved and was passionate about, but I used to do a lot of freebies for friends, but that wasn't sustainable. We don't really have to talk about this. We know it. And time is precious. So don't waste your time. Number 34, don't make money something it's not. Money is a symbol. It doesn't have any value in and of itself. You can't eat it, drink it, or wear it. For me, if you want to sum it up, it means self-reliance. This is coming from Margaret Atwood. She wrote The Handmaid's Tale. Oh my gosh, have you seen The Handmaid's Tale? Oh my God. I can't watch that show unless I'm in like a certain state of mind because it is, it messes with your mind. If you comment below, have you ever seen that show before? Oh my God. But back to what she's saying, it is kind of funny that we hold so much value with money. It's what it represents. And having financial freedom is something a lot of us watching this video want. Uh, we don't have to make money something it isn't, but we want to use it for what it is. Number 35 is reflect on your past spending patterns. This one's from Susie Orman. She says the one thing that you really can do is stick to your financial habits that you created during that year when we weren't able to spend money. That's a great place to start. She was on the Today Show and she was talking about how in 2020 you couldn't go out to dinner, right? So a lot of people were saving all that money. You couldn't go to the movie theaters. You couldn't, all the things that happened in 2020. Did anybody spend less in 2020? And I know that might be a hot button question because some people lost jobs. There were so many rough things going on in 2020. Some people in 2020 had some really strong revelations of how much they were spending on activities, entertainment, going out, dinners, concerts, all that kind of stuff. So it's good to reflect on your spending patterns and see where you can not spend so much and still have the happy life that you want. Number 36 is list out your monthly costs talk about this all the time. First have to list everything you spend money on and determine the must spends. Buying clothes or ordering something on Amazon, those are not must spends. When you first start budgeting, you want to know, you know, how much is coming in, but you really want to know how much you are spending. And you want to know what are the essentials and what is the icing on the cake. If you've never seen my video called My Survival Budget, I will leave that up here. That talks a lot about the essentials versus the icing on the cake, the wants. Number 37 is be confident and feel empowered. This one is also Susie Orman. One more useful money tip from Susie Orman encourages you to not bury your head in the sand when it comes to your personal finances which is definitely great advice. You are never powerful in your life until you are powerful over your money, how you think about it, feel about it, and invest it. In other words, take control of your finances. It doesn't have, finances don't have to be this mystery and this overwhelming, scary thing if you take control of it. And that's what we're doing on this channel. We're identifying how to budget, what to do, and having some great discussions on how we can better spend our money to suit our lifestyle and really cater our spending to what we believe in. Number 38, consider how money may affect those around you. Rihanna says, my money is not for me. It's always the thought that I can help someone else or in the future for if I have kids. So she's always thinking, she's thinking about generational wealth. When she has children, how is she gonna pass this down? How can I help my community? How can I help others with this money? When you are making a ton of money and can help others, it can really affect the community around you if you can help. I always think of Mr. Beast. If you don't watch Mr. Beast on YouTube yet, go watch a video, tell him I sent you. I love Mr. Beast's channel for that reason. He's always giving away money and I just like his spirit and his energy. Go check out Mr. Beast, tell him I sent you. Number 39, 
You might lose out if you don't stay organized. Woo! <laughs> That's why I love my budget. That's why I love it in every dollar. It stores every month and it's just so easy. It's in one place. Ooh, love it. Financial expert Dave Ramsey has plenty of great money tips that everyone can use. When it comes to budgeting, he recommends writing down your income and your expenses, whether you're using a pen and paper or the budgeting app. You guys know I use his budgeting app every dollar. The way you do it is a written plan. There is no exception. Be organized, have a plan, have a written unique budget every single month. When I heard his total money makeover for the first time, I was like, oh, this makes sense. Stay organized. Number 40, know that money doesn't ensure stability. Ramsey says, earning a lot of money is not the key to prosperity, how you handle it is. And number 41, actions speak louder than words when it comes to money. President Joe Biden shared this budgeting insight back in 2008 in the New York Times. My dad used to have an expression, don't tell me what you value, show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value. Isn't that like a good point? Like if you look at someone's budget and you see what they're prioritizing, you you know like what's important to them by looking at their budget. So that's like a smart thing to look at. Like look at your budget, try to look at your budget. I've never thought about it like this really, but try to look at it from like an objective point of view. Like if you looked at your budget and you saw, like say you didn't know you and you looked at your budget and you're like, what does this person value? Maybe look at it from that lens and just see what does it look like you value by what you're spending on. I think that's a cool exercise to try. Well, that is gonna wrap up our 41 tips of the day. I know that was quite a haul, but the way I see it, sometimes you'll be listening to a list and you just hear it differently and you're like, oh, I'm gonna try that. And it can make all the difference. Happy saving, everyone. If you are doing the savings challenge, let me know in the comments how you doing so far. If you are, in the process of saving money right now in any way, take a second, drop this in the comments, just write saving money. And I will know that that is on your mind and a goal of yours. If you haven't hit subscribe yet and you like talking about saving money, frugal living, budgeting, any of the above, please hit subscribe, hit the like button. It helps get this video to other people that enjoy talking about the same kind of thing. Hit the bell so you're notified each time I upload. And I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye.